I'm known quite infamously as like the Gen 2 guy. Uh, not because I'm an expert in Gen 2 or anything, but because I'm the guy that got s that uh, was behind all the big and some of the small YouTubers installing Gen 2 lately. Uh, it started with the Linux cast, who I honestly started that whole trend in his community, and uh, I don't apologize for it. You totally deserve that, Matt. <laughs> and uh, I was even in a patron chat with DistroTube, and I talked him into uh, installing Gen 2. And uh, I think as a result that inspired Brody Robertson to do it. So uh, you would think that I would actually run Gen 2. Which in truth... Kind of sort of not really. But this video is coming to you from Gen 2. So uh, let's pull up the desktop here. Yeah, and uh, I am being very unprofessional about it and showing you my uh, Gen 2 capturing device software of OBS Studio. Uh, I am running not stock Gen 2. This is uh, Gen 2 using the testing branch. Uh, I can pull up uh, my mic.conf file here. You can see... Can you see? Well, I don't know how well you can see because, you know, I'm recording my entire screen. Let me just, so I'm just going to zoom in really far here, except keywords. Uh, tilde AMD64 means that I'm pulling stuff directly from uh, the testing branch for Gen 2. And the desktop that I'm actually running on this is Mate using the, the uh, Mate Yaru dark theme uh, that Ubuntu Mate actually uses in their latest release. But, uh, honestly, I can agree with Brody Robertson. Je if you can install Arch Linux V in the command line and you have the patience for it, you can definitely install Gen 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, package up uh, well, not necessarily package, but I'm going to like take everything here in my uh, Etsy portage uh, directory, and I'm actually going to post it up in a GitHub. That way you guys can see how I have Gen 2 configured. And uh, this configuration actually took me, and I'm not going to lie, roughly about 52 hours to actually get set up with. And uh, a lot of that is me just run, running a command, running a command to emerge something, and walking away. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm going to first of all thank the uh, Gen 2 community on I on the official IRC channels for being very helpful with uh, me asking them questions because you know. Some Gen 2 does things a little bit differently. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, clear up the terminal real quick. Uh, by the way, you can see that I'm currently uh, doing something on my server that's SSH'd into it. Uh, that is, I ran into an issue when I was trying to make a home lab video, and now my server is being extremely slow to do anything. And this DNF command is removing packages, and it has been running for hours at this point. <laughs> But it is doing something. I just don't know why it's being so slow. <laughs> so uh, we're going to hopefully hope and pray that that finishes by the time we wake up in the morning. And we're going to fix it. But yes, it really is 3 in the morning when I'm recording this. Because I'm a savage and I can't sleep at night. So uh, let me just take a moment to talk quickly about how Gen 2 does packages. Uh, Gen 2 is a source-based distribution, which means that when you install something, you're not grabbing a binary and installing it. Well, you can, but most likely you're not. Uh, you're, ba you're literally pulling down source code 
from a Git repository and compiling it from source. Now, uh, Gen2 uses these Python scripts called Portage. Cat, stop jumping up here. I know you want to be in the video, but uh, we're, we're not talking to you yet. But uh, Gen2 uses this system called Portage as the default package management. Uh, Portage is a more or less inspired, not necessarily fork of the OpenBSD port system. But how Portage works is it grab it grabs uh, source code. It you uh, set these things called use flags, which are like compiler flags, to modify the software. So. The intent behind it is you can customize the software, make it as minimal or as large as you want. And theoretically speaking, your system is faster. Th Nowadays, that is marginally true. I'm not going to say that it's accurate. But uh, one, th one benefit behind it is that... Uh, your system's actually relatively lightweight. Uh, lighted, I'm running two terminals, a couple things in the background, a co two of them being electronic applications. I am doing software rendering on OBS Studio, not not hard, not the GPU accelerated hardware because that doesn't work too well when you're recording 1440p for some reason on AMD graphics. That only works for uh, 1080 and 4K. <laughs> but I'm running a full desktop environment. I'm running OBS Studio recording at native 1440, uh, uncompressed. Uh, I have a terminal SSH into a server, so that's not going to take too many resources. Uh, I have a file manager open, and I've got three Electron applications and an IRC client. And you can see my my memory usage isn't even two and a half gigs. It's two point four four. My CPU usage doesn't necessarily matter in this context because I'm not running GNOME. But uh, I can get the system idling using the Mate desktop on a fresh boot under three hundred megabytes of idle memory usage, and that is because I am running such a minimal base installation of Gen 2. Uh, not to say that it, my Gen 2 install actually is minimal. So if I just do a quick Neo fetch here, if I can spell right, I do have quite a few packages installed. I have 1061 uh, installed right now, which uh, is a, which can seem like an awful lot, but in reality, that's actually pretty minimal compared to other installation installed systems with a full full desktop environment like what I have here. Uh, and you guys have seen me uh, debate with content creators in the past about like how NeoFetch grabs a package count. Well, in Gen two, the package count's actually accurate because I actually do have one thousand sixty one packages installed. Because Gen 2 doesn't do meta packages like Arch Linux does. Or uh, like uh, what the other distros do. Now, it might not be like 100% accurate. Because uh, not all of my packages are fresh. Are uh, grabbed fresh via Emerge. I do still have some of the packages from the original Tarball uh, still floating around. Which they're not counted in Emerge yet. But me just running running uh, world updates eventually that will grow and uh, we'll see before too long but yeah I'm running a 510 kernel alright and I am cheating right now and I'm using a gen 2 binary kernel because I don't want to take the time to set up a damn kernel they take forever to compile but yeah, I've got a full desktop environment. I've got a run launcher if I want one. Lighted, it's just unthemed Rofi right now, which unthemed Rofi is better than no Rofi or the menu. 
as I found out. Because uh, the one thing that Matei doesn't have, it doesn't have a built-in run launcher or run launcher-like system. Like, I can't just hit the super key and pull up a menu with stock Mate. Now, I do have the brisk menu installed, and that does work, but that works interestingly well enough. But, uh, let's talk about Emerge itself. Uh, the Emerge command is actually pretty darn simple. So, if I just do a quick run, uh, command on it, or uh, just a quick pull up the main page here and just give it a quick scroll through. There's an awful lot in here. Like, uh, it is detailed. It's a 1,000 page, a line man page. That's a lot. But Emerge is the front end for Portage. It's how you interact with Portage. Sometimes. But, uh, let, primarily what you're doing with Portage directly is you're just configuring it. So in your etc directory, there's you have a portage and uh, there's stuff in here. And uh, these top level files, they actually do kind of matter. The big important one that you do see most often is the make.conf. And uh, I showed that to you guys earlier, but uh, let's actually pull it up in a text editor. I guess we give it sudo just in case, right? But yeah, this is the make.com file. This is your global configuration. And uh, you, there's multiple levels, but you can see I got some, some stuff turned on. I've got some stuff turned off. Uh, you can see I'm running pretty basic stuff here. Like uh, I'm calling March equals native because, well, that's good enough for me. It adds a couple seconds extra to my GCC compile t times, but... Uh, Whatever, but the longer I maintain the system, the bigger this file is actually going to get. Because I'm going to, as I learn Gen 2, I'm going to add to this and uh, make some changes. Uh, like, uh, I might add, add or remove some more use flags. I might actually get around to uh, deciding if I want a license rather than just accepting everything. Uh, I might discover some more features of Portage that I want. And I might even change some of my default options. But I'm probably never going to ch mess with the Porridge niceness. If you want to learn more about what that command does, just man nice. But uh, let's get out of that. But uh, I want to... And then uh, the that's just one file that I mess with. And then there's another file that I mess with here, package.use. I, I actually run it as a folder. But this could also just be a standalone text file. But you can see if I look into this, I have a breakdown of all kinds of other files. These are the packages that I'm actually customizing. So if I, uh, well, first of all, let's, uh, uh, let's, let's go ahead and go into there. And I want to look at, let's look at Firefox. Uh, if I can spell. But yeah, you can see that uh, the way that port Portage uh, run runs package names is it looks in a certain repository, and right there's a package name. Uh, that's actually kind of important because uh, you could have multiple different variations of, say, Git, for example, shows up, shows up in, like, three different repositories. There is... A uh, text dash editor slash git, which is weird. Uh, Emacs has like three different repositories for it. But you can see here in Firefox, I have more stuff declared. These are the things that I am compiling Firefox with. Like I'm forcing hardware acceleration. I'm adding Open H264, Pulse Audio, Dbus. I'm telling it, hey, let's use some system libraries here. Uh, where's one that, like, I'm actually, uh, disabling stuff? Uh, hmm. 
I think Chromium I might have some stuff disabled. No. No, uh, not Audacity. But yeah, uh, ah, right, here we go. But yeah, you can see here in, uh, say, like, my Mesa drivers, I disabled a couple things here. Uh, I don't know why I have VA API disabled. I should probably enable that. But, uh, yeah, actually, let's uh, go ahead and fix that now. Yeah, and it's uh, that simple. Uh, you can see that I called sudo edit and not sudo vim. Uh, because uh, my global, my global uh, editor is Vim, and by calling it calling it with sudo edit, I'm o I'm actually editing a temporary file that overwrites the Mesa file. That way, if say my editor crashes, I don't break my Mesa file. But uh, now that I made a change here, let's call emerge. So sudo emerge, and I always call emerge with tacket. That's it. Uh, that is actually short for tac tac ask because if you don't say that it will not it will never stop to confirm it'll just go and install it which uh that may or may not be something that you kind of want but uh you know i changed my use and uh we're going to call world Oh, nothing to emerge. Maybe this? Or do I want to call new use? I think we want new use. If I could spell my package manager front end's name properly, you know, we'll just call Mesa directly. Ah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, uh, you can see that Emerge likes to tell you stuff. Like, uh, you can tell, like, here is saying that, hey, there's uh, going to be, there, you might run into some issues with uh, Ruby Gems, which is fine. I'm not going to mess with Ruby Gems. And in fact, I kind of just wanted to uh, figure out a way to disable that message. But yeah, now that we changed a use flag, all I have to do is just uh, run emerge-a mesa, and uh, here it's telling me that, hey, there's an e-build for this. Uh, this R means that we're going to recompile it. Uh, this is the package with the version number, and uh, this is what's changing. Uh, we're just adding Voppy. So I'm going to, so I would just hit yes and send it on its way, but because I'm recording, I'm just going to hit no. And uh, we're going to add a P flag here just to, like, pretend. That's what it stands for, is what P stands for. And uh, that'll basically just, like, run a quick test here. And uh, what happens if you call emerge without sudo or ask? It'll just stop and go, like, hey, did you want to pretend that? Yeah, let's pretend that. And... Yeah, same exact result, except that it won't actually do anything. Uh, removing packages is also interesting because what you want to do is you want to emerge and deselect. And uh, what that does is uh, remove stuff. Re it, it tells uh, Portage that you don't care about that application anymore. And, but it doesn't actually remove the application, which is... An interesting experience so uh, say if so when you deselect a package you're just telling your portage that hey ignore that package we're not gonna do anything with it and uh, you may and then later on you go through and and if you ever want to perform if you ever want to clear your system of like stuff you're not using anymore uh, like uh, I actually think I have like three or four music players installed right now because I'm looking around yeah, I've got like three or four music players installed. So I got like whatever the hell of this thing is, and then Dead Beef, uh, 
Gary deck or yeah I don't even know what that's called so yeah uh, let's go ahead and uh, deselect some stuff here Gua I think I spelled it right. But yeah, you can see that it removes it from my world favorites file. What is the world's file? Uh, the world's file is the name of every single package that you directly call to emerge. That's not your the package's dependencies. Those are the commands that you tell Portage to install. Uh, that's an important disclaimer. But yeah, uh, let's call a quick command here. And what you can see here is I'm telling Emerge that, hey, I want to clean up dependencies. I want you to ask about it, but I'm also calling deep because that's going to go deep into the system and tell me, hey, these are all the things that uh, you kind of want to remove, right? And I put the ask flag on here because it's just like, hey, I want to take a moment and I want to look through this. And it's going to tell me everything that's going to remove. It's going to remove uh, dead beef and Gwake, which are the packages that I that I deselected earlier. And then it's going to tell me these here. And because I was smart and declared ask, uh, I have plenty of time to sit there and look up these packages because uh, fun thing is when I first ran this command since this installation, it literally removes all the fonts from my system, which I guess some people would consider like a bad part of Gen 2. But it reminded me that my favorite thing for using Linux is that uh, Linux and Gen 2 specifically forces me to realize that I am actually in complete control of my operating system and uh, that's not something I can say for like other distributions like Ubuntu the snaps are auto updating now uh, Fedora I mean Fedora is kinda of weird but at the same time if you're sticking to the workstation release, you might not want their changes. <laughs> like, uh, I personally don't want to mess with GNOME 41, which is why on this uh, installation, I'm actually running the Mate desktop. And it's Mate, not Mate or Mate. It's Mate. That's actually how it's pronounced. It's supposedly French. But I don't know French, so I can't really confirm or deny that. Uh, there is a few select other people we could we could ask that. But why did it take me fifty two hours to install Gen two? Because I kept fucking up. <laughs> That's honestly why. Uh, you can watch the eight hour stream and watch me uh, spend the first two hours of it trying to get ButterFS set up and then ultimately giving up and going to EXT4 because I kept screwing up ButterFS because it was late and I was tired and not feeling particularly that well to begin with. And, uh,. Honestly, migrating for migrating, I installed Gentoo using the stable repositories there, which uh, gives you a bootable system. Uh, the problem with the st with running Gentoo using the stable repositories is that while yes, you could build a pretty solid system and uh, you can get uh, solid applications. 
the big problem behind that is that a lot of the software that you actually want to be using is in the testing repositories. But if you're smart and you're savvy enough, you can tell stable Gentoo to install software from upstream, which I thought was pretty cool. And I was going to do that. But when you do that, you also have to do that for dependencies, which, uh, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> and, you know, three or four things for OBS Studio, that's fine. I think it's something like 30 some packages just to get Steam working. And, uh, I'm not the biggest gamer in the world, but you know, I don't want to make Steam inaccessible, and uh, flat packs you have to set up from scratch on Gen 2. I mean, it's possible, but when app images are available and app images work out of the box after you install Fuse, you don't want to set up flat packs. <laughs> Because uh, flat packs won't have access to sound devices, video devices, uh, your file system. I don't even think they get access to like your system toolkit. <laughs> so uh, it becomes a, a mess in a hurry. So I'm running Gentoo with 100% native packages, only using one app image, and that's for my keyboard software, because the keyboard software does not ship a uh, e-build which I'm probably going to be constructing before too long probably I don't know yet but I have been playing around with uh, building packages for Gen 2 and uh, building packages is uh, you're basically just making a text instruction file on how to compile the software and that's packaging for Gen 2 pretty simple <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm probably going to be making more Gen 2 videos because I actually really like this operating system. Maybe a little bit too much. Anyways, have a good day. I'm sorry I answered the question way too late.